a very warm welcome to St Andrews. It is a warm welcome today. And uh, also a warm welcome to those uh, of you who are joining us online. Particularly warm welcome if you're visiting us. Please do make yourself known to me at the end of the service. The grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? We're going to be thinking about how Jesus calmed the storm. But we begin by singing hymn number 419. But I'm going to ask, because it's a tune that's not particularly well known to myself, maybe to one or two, I'm sure a number know it. But um, we'll sing, could you sing through the first verse for us and then we'll stop and... Uh, sing it through again and uh, if you know the first verse uh, please do join in with that thank you As we remain standing, so we pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you please be seated at this point um if there are children who are five or under we have uh, a staffed creche um and uh, allison is standing there at the back if uh, there are people who would like to make use of that let us hear our lord's blessing on those who follow him blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall be comforted.
for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who suffer persecution for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. And we pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. We stand to sing the glory. God, our Saviour, look on this wounded world in pity and in power. Hold us fast to your promises of peace, won for us by your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please be seated? We have our first reading. Thank you. Today's reading was taken from 2 Corinthians, chapter 6, verses 113. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great, ter through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, 
and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide your hearts also. This is the word of the Lord. We're going to say verses from Psalm 107. And please join me in saying the verses in bold print. And would you please stand? Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is gracious, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say this, those he redeemed from the hand of the enemy and gathered out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south, those who go down to the sea in ships and fly their trade in great waters. These have seen the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For as his word, the stormy wind arose and lifted up the waves of the sea. They were carried up to the heavens and down again to the deep. Their soul melted away in their peril. They reeled and staggered like a drunkard. They wore in their wit's end. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he brought them out of their distress. He made the storm be still, and the waves of the sea were calmed. Then were they glad, because they were at rest, and he brought them to the haven they desired. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and the wonders he does for his children. Let them exalt him in the congregation of the people and praise him in the council of the elders. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. On that day when evening had come, Jesus said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great gale arose and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we're perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Father God, please, I pray now that you would speak to us through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you please be seated? Well, if you um, look up, uh, look at our ceiling, you'll see that it's sort of, uh, well, it's a sort of a shape that is 
quite a common sort of shape that you would find in churches in the UK and probably in, in many places in Europe and, and in other countries. It's uh, like an upturned boat. Uh, and you'll realize that we call this part the nave, <laughs> the, which uh, I'm sure has something to do with navy and with sea and something like that and boats. Um, it's not accidental. The church is often likened to a ship. It's an illustration that Peter uses. Do you remember Noah's Ark? Uh, Peter speaks of the church as being like the ark in which Noah and his family were saved while everyone else uh, perished uh, and uh, he, the ark kept them safe and brought them to a place of safety. And here we are, gathered together in one boat because Jesus has called us to go to the other side. We're on a journey. But we're not on our own. He is with us. As a people, we're on a journey. We're on a journey together. We often say this, but we're very different. But maybe for a year, two years, ten years, maybe longer, whatever it is, God has called us to worship together in the good ship, St. Andrews. He's called us to be together, learn together, grow together, be shaped by each other, to encourage each other, to challenge each other through just meeting, through working together, through fighting with each other, through making up with each other, through playing with each other, playing together, we're in the same boat. There are other boats. There's one of them just down the road. There's another boat actually that meets here in the afternoon. But at the moment, we're thinking about this boat. I, I could never say that this is the only boat that Jesus is in but it's the boat that we are in. And I can say this, that Jesus is with us because that is his promise. We're trying to be obedient. Jesus gave the command, go to the other side, leave the old life, begin to live for the new resurrection life. Uh, and uh, we're, we are going to the other side. We're going towards the kingdom of heaven. In um, the voyage of the Dawn Treader, uh, in the Chronicles of Narnia, Caspian set sail to find some of the missing lords. But he and the crew are drawn further and further east to the very edge of the world, to the, to the border, to the beginning of the land of the emperor beyond the sun. It's the place where Aslan rules, and Aslan is the Christ figure. And we're drawn to that land, not just to our death. Our death is simply a harbor, a port on the way, albeit a pretty major port. But beyond that, beyond death. And each of us is called to constantly move on, maybe physically to move to another place, but usually we are called to move on in the same place. The constantly, constantly to be moving from place to place or from church to church is actually a way of avoiding facing up to ourselves. We think that the problems will be solved by going somewhere new, but when we go somewhere new, we bring our old self with us and nothing changes. No, we're called to take off the old nature and put on the new nature. We're called to cross the equivalent of our Red Sea, just like the people of Israel 4,000 years ago did, from the land of slavery to the land of freedom. That's where we're going. We may have arguments about what we will find when we get there, we may argue about which way should we tack. Should we tack in that direction first or in that direction? We may argue about the color of the boat. People love arguing about colors. 
or what rations we should take. People love arguing about what to eat, or the different names that we give the different parts of the boat, or who should do which job, but we are still all in the same boat. The priest or the pastor or the minister is not the captain, far from it. They're one of the crew, although they have a particular role to play. The captain is Jesus. He's the one who's built the boat and owns the boat. He's the one who has invited us into the boat, who's pulled us out of the deep, dark water into the boat. And he is the one who has brought us together and has taught us. He's the one who has told us where to go. Let us go to the other side. I'm afraid that I'm just as mutinous as the rest of us. I'm just as quick to complain about the other members of the crew. I'm just as quick to make a bid to grab the tiller and to steer us where I want to go. Or if we're not going where I want us to go, I'm just as quick to jump ship, to lower the lifeboat, and to sail off on my own in a different direction. And I'm afraid that I'm just as quick to panic when the storms come. And oh, they do come. There are the storms that are outside and the storms inside. Paul talks about some of the storms which he and his companions have faced in that remarkable reading we had from 2 Corinthians. And the second letter, his second letter to the Corinthians is a remarkable letter because as people in our Bible study have, have noticed, it's the letter where Paul opens up about his soul. We see the person behind the letters. And Paul talks of storms, of affliction, hardship, and calamities. He experienced several literal shipwrecks and storms at sea. And there are storms of beatings, imprisonments, riots, storms when they're dishonored or shamed, when they're punished and stripped of all things. There are the storms of anxiety, about work, the churches, even, he says, about his life. And we'll face storms on the journey to the other side. There are the storms that we all face, the storms of living, the storms of life. But there are also the storms that we face because we are being obedient to Jesus. There will be individual storms, the difficulties we face, failures, sickness, loneliness, abandonment, bereavement, anxieties, about money, travel, documents, whether the UK is going to be put on the red list, work, children, parents, the past, the future. There'll be the storms of temptation to despair of ourselves or of others or of God, temptation to give up. And because we're all in one boat, the storms of one will often be the storms of another. If someone is going through a tempest, then there will be others who will experience that turbulence. But, and this is the important thing, we are not on our own. God is with us. Jesus was able to sleep through the storm. That may be because he was exhausted. But actually, even if you are exhausted and you think you are going to die, you will stay awake. <laughs> Jesus had utter confidence in his father, the one who, I don't know whether you noticed this, the readings were very well linked together today, Psalm 107. He's the one who made the storm be still and hushed the waves of the sea. And also, and this was a new thought for me, if you think about it, Jesus also has confidence in his disciples, as his followers. He's not a sailor. They're the sailors. They're the ones who are used to sailing a boat in a storm. The best thing he can do is get out of the pet way and let them get on with the job. And Jesus is so confident in God and so and confident in them that he's able to go to sleep while the storm is raging. There was another person in a story quite like this who slept in a storm. It was someone who was not being obedient to God, but who was running away from God. 
but who was also acutely aware of the presence of God. I think that's the reason why Jonah slept. While all the other sailors panicked, Jonah knew that God was still in control. And when they realized that they were not going to survive the storm, that the ship was not going to make it, he told them to throw him overboard. He was prepared to go deeper into the storm, to meet what he must have assumed was going to be his death, but with the absolute confidence that God was still in control. The problem here is that the disciples do not realize that because Jesus is in the boat with them, God is with them. And when they wake Jesus and ask him if he doesn't care that they're about to die, Jesus rebukes them and asks them a question. Why are you still afraid? Have you no faith? It's the second question that Jesus has asked them in Mark chapter 4. The first question comes after he is told a parable. Do you not understand this parable, he says? How then will you understand all the parables? And there is a link Because they haven't really understood, because they haven't really understood who Jesus is, they're not able to trust him when the storm comes. The followers of Jesus were going to face far worse storms than storms at sea. They were going to see Jesus crucified. They were going to be mocked and hated, hunted like wild animals. They were going to face bitter and fierce persecution. They were going to face torture and death, all because they were being obedient to Jesus. But they held firm, because they had begun to realize and understand who Jesus was. He is the one who the wind and the waves obey. He is the eternal Son of God, and he is the one who is with us. In Psalm 44, the writer laments the fact that for your sake, he says, he's talking to God, because of you, he's saying, God, we are being killed all day long and are counted as sheep for the slaughter. And he cries out to God, wake up, rouse yourself, God. That's what the disciples say to Jesus. Wake up, rouse yourself. Well, Jesus does rouse himself. He stands up and he orders the wind to cease and the waves to be still. And they were. And God does answer the psalmist's prayer. He does rouse himself. He does do something. In Jesus, his son, he comes to live among us. He dies for us and rises from the dead and he is with us. And Paul, because he has such confidence in who Jesus is, Turn Psalm 44 on its head. In Romans 8, he quotes Psalm 44, that verse. For your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. We're like animals being led into the abattoir. But he continues, no. In all these things, in the storms of life, We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And he continues, nothing, no, nothing, not even the most terrifying tempest, nothing in life, not even death, not even the most horrific demon, not even the devil himself can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Why? Because Jesus, the Son of God, is with us. Would you please stand as we say together and confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven, of all that is seen and unseen. 
we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. Would you please be seated for our prayers? Is Sarah... Sarah, well done, you managed to get here. Um, before Sarah comes, uh, I have some very sad news to share, which those of you who will have um, read the um, uh, weekly update will be aware of, which is that on Monday, Hong, uh, the husband of Ming, uh, died uh, following COVID. Um, we do give thanks to God for Hong. There will be a memorial service Fortunately, Ming also has COVID as is in hospital in quite a serious state. So please uh, pray for her. And uh, they have a daughter, Wen Yu, in the United Kingdom, who at the moment, or was, she's obviously not now, but was doing her A-levels. So we do pray uh, for them. I think Ming will be joining us online. Ming, we are praying for you. Uh, our love goes with you, with your daughter, and with the family. And uh, we bless God for Hong. And we're going to pray now and just commit him into God's hands. Father God, thank you for Hong. We thank you for his love for Ming, for his great rich abilities as a teacher for his love for his family and support for them both in China and for his support of his daughter. Thank you for his gentle spirit. And Father, we do commend him into your hands. And we pray for Ming. We pray, we pray for recovery. And we pray for their daughter. For when you, please, will you protect them and watch over them and give them peace as they go through this storm. Amen. The response to, Lord, in the storms of life we call upon you is, grant us your peace. Lord, in the storms of life we call upon you, grant us your peace. Blessed are you, Lord our God, for you are ever with us, and your presence brings us close to your power and your peace. You are ready to hear our cry and to help us in our troubles. We rejoice in your love and in your care. Blessed are you, God, forever, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty and loving God, we seek to rest in your presence and in your peace. The church is often buffeted by storms of antagonism and opposition. We remember before you all Christians 
who are struggling to survive in areas where they face violence or ridicule for their faith. We pray especially for those whose lives are at risk at this time. We remember also young Christians who have to face opposition from their friends and relatives. Lord, in the storms of life we call upon you. Grant us your peace. God, our creator, we rejoice in the well-being that is ours. We remember in your presence all who are suffering at this time from storms, from floods, from drought. We pray for all who are caught up in war, in violence and acts of wickedness. We remember all who are suffering from poverty or who are in great debt. Lord, in the storms of life, we call upon you. Grant us your peace. We give you thanks for the love and protection of our homes. Lord, grant that our loved ones may know your peace and your presence. We remember homes where people are not coping well, where there are struggles in relationships. We remember especially homes where there are great tensions between parents and their children. Bless, O oh Lord, all whose homes have fallen apart and all children who have been taken into care. Lord, in the storms of life, we call upon you. Grant us your peace. God, you are ever present. We ask you to strengthen and support all who are overwhelmed by the storms of life. We remember those whose sickness finds no cure. We pray for loved ones and carers who feel exhausted and unable to cope anymore. Bless, O oh Lord, all who have been injured this week or who have gone into hospital and all their loved ones who are anxious for them. Especially at this time, we pray for Ming and her daughter, Wen Yu. We pray for Giles' parents, Anthony and Penelope. We pray for Luke O'Connor. And we pray for all doctors, nurses, and medical staff around the world. Give them the wisdom to treat their patients and the strength to keep going. Lord, in the storms of life, we call upon you. Grant us your peace. Mighty God, when the last great storm overwhelms us, help us to know you are there as the Lord and giver of life, to know we are not alone and you will not let us perish. Bless our loved ones, who are departed from the storms and troubles of this world. 
with your presence and your peace. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please stand? Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We greet some of one another from a distance as we just uh, uh, share the peace with. And we're going to sing, oft in danger, oft in woe. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all place times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit. 
and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forevermore praising you and singing. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is the blood of, my new, of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, Renew us by your spirit. Inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Would you please be seated or kneel? And using the language or version which comes most naturally to us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ.
welcome them to the Lord's table. All who have received the gift of baptism and all who love the Lord Jesus and want to follow him and serve him. If you're not sure about your own personal faith at this point, or if the discipline of your own church does not permit you to receive communion here, you are still welcome to come forward. Just indicate to me you prefer not to receive, and I will pray that you know God's blessing. To draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave to you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nation is always found. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his love, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and hear us.
His beauty is beyond our imagining, and His power we cannot comprehend. Show us your glory as far as we can grasp it, and shield us from knowing more than we can bear, until we may look upon you without fear. Through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. We pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and lives to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live that word to your praise and It is really lovely to welcome you. Please do make yourself known, especially if you're visiting us. Thank you for joining us. If you've been online, it's been great to have you with us. Uh, refreshments are served. I'm sorry we can't do those online, but refreshments are served uh, by going out into the entrance lobby through into the uh, chapter room, into the, into the library or kitchen or whatever we call it, and then into here. Uh, and... Um, uh, and then uh, this uh, uh, coming week, we have, uh, th th and then we have our confirmation group and the youth group are meeting. Uh, so um, this coming week, uh, services as usual on Tuesday, our Bible study, our online Bible study, and Wednesday, uh, our communion service, followed by Bible study in person. Um, we've had a number of birthdays this week. And um, I noticed Peter's waving his arms, but I know it's not Peter's birthday. It was uh, Anna's birthday on Friday. Come on out, Anna. Natalia, is Natalia here? Hugo Suresh, you had a birthday this week. Um, Ksenia isn't here. Sergey, has anybody else had a birthday this <gasps> Oh, quite a number of people. Please, come on. Sarah, why haven't I got you on the... I don't know. Come on out, please, if you've had a birthday this last week. Come on out. Was there somebody over there as well? Because you get a chocolate. It's worth it. I know growing one year older can be a bit of a problem, but it's worth it because you get a chocolate here. So would you like to take a chocolate? And, uh, and let's give you a round of applause. And say. <coughs> and while um, chocolate selection is going on there, we're going to sing our next, our uh, last hymn, Lead Us, Heavenly Father, Lead Us. Christ, 
give you grace to grow in holiness, deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you, be with those for whom you pray and those you love, now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.